Sharp Jesus. Ben and I went hunting up in North Texas. He is looking at a small group of hogs with the color alert palette on his bearing optics Super Yoder R thermal weapon sight. This color palette is most useful for spotting the hottest targets in a given environment. In this case he's looking at a couple of deer right there. Behind him to the left is a spot of sun heated ground that is also standing out. While this palette is probably the best for spotting the hottest targets, it, it isn't the best for targeting those targets, and so he's gone back to white hot. As you can see, the wind is blowing off to the left. We're going to head off to the left and then cut back right in order to make our shots on these hogs. Here we've done that, and we're getting set up. My video is through an IR Hunter Mark III thermal weapon sight, and of course I'm using a Lone Star Armory TX-15 multipurpose carbine enhanced. And we're both shooting 6.5 Grindel ammunition. Ready. Three, two, one. Both of the opening hogs go down in place. Way to hit him. Safe? Nope. Still got one tracking? No, I was just looking. <sighs> Safe. Safe. Brass Catcher by Tactical Brass Recovery. We came away with three hogs down. Two boars and one sow, none of them very large. We've moved on to the next property where we found some hogs at the top of the hill. In the background I'm trying to close a noisy metal gate using a chain, which is not the easiest task in the dark. Here we are partway through our stalk and we found the main body, the sounder. At this point a loud diesel truck has come down the road and watch what the hogs do. They might hold up on the other side of the fence. Like they're have audio recorded? I have audio recorded. First the sound and the smaller hogs. On the other side, slowly. And now the larger hogs are starting to move off to the other side of the fence as well. We're gonna have to huff it. We're gonna head off to the left in order to try to catch them on the other side of the hill. Do you have a target you believe on our side? But the hogs have actually come down the hill and are on our side of the fence for the most part. That's a boar. How convenient of you. I'll get the big girl in front. Three, two, one. <laughs> And this is where it's going to get really exciting as two hogs close the distance on us quickly. And both go down. I am on safe. Wow, I didn't see him. Yeah, I had to take him down. See, I shot another runner. <laughs> I shot the next one in line. I count four down at least, and the fifth got hit and went over the hill. I'll have to check over the hill. Safe? Safe. Fist bump. Fist bump. Bam. Ben's opening shot was on a 140 pound mule footed sow. Mule footed hogs are uncommon, although there are several in this area that we've taken in previous hunts. There's a look at the front feet, and a look at the hind feet. That fifth hog was just over the hill, so we came away with five hogs, two sows, a female, and two small males. It's now after 2 o'clock in the morning. We've got a bright moon up, and we are on the last property of the night, and we have a sounder of hogs spread out over this field. We don't see any livestock anywhere in the field. 
The wind is in our favor at this point. But what we don't realize is that all of these hogs are actually quite small. Here we've moved up about 30 yards. I'm going through trying to assess boars and sows and not having a whole lot of luck. And what I don't realize is Ben has already selected the target that he wants. Well, I guess are you ready? And so now I've selected mine. Three, two, one. Dang it. Needless to say, things got very frustrating at this point. We came away with a total of four hogs out of, I think, six or seven hit, including the 95-pound sow, a 70-pound female, a little 30-pound female, and a 90-pound boar. Carpe sus, my friends.